My name is Eddie Blackwell. I'm a senior systems engineer with VMware. I've been on board for uh, going on four years. I'm based in Austin, Texas. I cover enterprise accounts, um, Dell, BMC, Tesoro, et cetera. Um, had the pleasure of seeing uh, accounts grow from uh, small farms to large farms, ranging from anywhere from 50 VMs to uh, tens to thousands of VMs. So a um, little background there. I've got some counterparts up here. Uh, Stefan? Yep. My name is Stefan Bonengler. I'm coming from Germany. Also being a, a specialist in systems engineer, working in Germany also for um, named accounts and um, specializing on SRM, um, BCDR, so backup and disaster recovery and also security. And uh, last but not least, my final colleague, Melody. Um, I'm Melody Hazi, and I'm also a systems engineer. Um, I've been with VMware almost four and a half years. Um, before I was a systems engineer, I ran um, the engineering infrastructure internally. Um, I used to manage all 23 remote sites, I think was the last count we had. And I did a lot of, you probably heard the term this week, uh, dog food or eating our own dog food. So I ran a lot of the initiatives to run our own products in-house, especially in when they were in even beta stages on production environments. Um, so let's get started. Cool. All right. Just by a show of hands, how many of you have uh, taken a self-paced lab downstairs? Okay. Whoa. Good. Good. <laughs> Just by a show of hands, how many of you have done this lab downstairs? Okay. Even better. All right. Um, so I think everyone's familiar with how we've set up everything downstairs, right? The cloud idea. Um, we're leveraging Lab Manager and Vue to bring up this central VM, right, which is going to be the access point for you to get to Virtual Center and do a number of different things. In our lab, um, we cover a number of different topics, and it's hard to encompass everything that you would want in a troubleshooting lab in the context of 60 to 90 minutes. So we've got some, uh, some aspects of this lab that touch to people that are novices, uh, some aspects of this lab that talk to people that are at an intermediate level, and then some to at the, at the advanced level. But we're going to do something different today. Um, you've seen a number of different presentations, but our, uh, uh, this next 60 minutes will be completely interactive. So I will be joining all of you out here, and uh, we will be helping Stefan, who is our junior VMware admin. Mm. And through the course of the day, Stefan has uh, just come from the VMworld party last night. He's not as sharp as he uh, typically is. So it's our responsibility to help Stefan troubleshoot his lab issues. Eddie. Yes, sir. What is this thing for? <laughs> oh, boy. Nice. How do you use that? <laughs> we're, we're in trouble. <laughs> okay. Continue, please. Yep, sure, sure. Um, did you want to tell him anything about the, uh, the educational services? Yeah. So basically, it, uh, as Eddie said, it was pretty hard for us. There is um, a four-day uh, course uh, for troubleshooting. And um, it covers all the aspects of the architecture, like vCenter, um, SAN, storage, networking, um, all the stuff in depth. So our task was really to do a lab that you're able to do in one hour. So in one hour, you, you cannot cover everything about troubleshooting. You know? I took a vCenter troubleshooting class, an internal one, which took just for vCenter one day. So basically, what we tried to achieve with this lab was to teach you about troubleshooting methodology and narrowing search and also get some interaction. Um, I can recommend this course. It's uh, pretty heavy. They can uh, really, it's, a, it's a part of the VACP track, the, the VMware Advanced, cert or Certified Advanced Professional, VCIP, sorry, other, uh, why, um, other way around. And it's a, a really um, good course, as already mentioned. So let's go into the scenario. I'm the junior admin, and um, I need your help, basically, because I don't know what this is and um, how to use a keyboard. So basically, I'm totally dependent on you, and uh, you will guide me through this lab. So All right. Let's so start. I, I think the first thing we should do, Stefan, is uh, familiarize them with their environment. So maybe we could... Architectural questions are always important. Yeah? To know the architecture, you're absolutely right. Um, so basically, this is a very simple lab because of resources. We have two ESX servers. They've got three NICs, um, three VM kernel ports, um, one for management, one for IP storage. We've got a Falcon Store um, appliance in there, and one for remote networking, and another DV switch for the VMs itself. So um, quite a simple setup, two, two ESX servers, one vCenter. Then in the lab environment, we've got a virtual uh, management assistant which is basically our appliance for managing ESX and ESXi servers centrally. 
and quite an interesting portion, also part of Lab 23, remote management tools. And it can be used quite good, the Vima, to centrally administer a bunch of ESX and ESX ISOs and also to automate tasks for setup. So what it has, it has all these remote, nitty-gitty remote management tools installed, like um, the vSphere CLI and also the, the SDK for Perl for that. Yeah. And uh, there's also a central syslog server capability, so you can also use it as a central syslog server for your ESXi um, syslog files. So basically, ESXi sys or log files don't uh, survive so the reboots, they're not pertaining. It's, uh, it's, it's very good to define a central syslog server. Okay, but um, anything more? Uh, vCenter, please. Yeah, um, <laughs> okay. Thank you, senior administrator. So we got to have this ticket, guys. Let's go. I think for uh, most of you that have played with Virtual Center enough, you kind of know that when you see the connecting for too long of a period of time, that's usually not something good. <laughs> oh. Oops, okay. So, <clears throat> where to start searching? We already have an error, we can't get in. What can we do <laughs> to narrow down what the root cause okay. of this problem is? Service? Service? Can start the service. I heard first, Eddie, here on the side, uh, make sure the ser that the server is up. Absolutely right. Let's do that. Let's check this. Yep. The server itself is up. That's, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm Julia and I need your help. Yeah, and so can, I just, it, can you say, it, say it loud again for everybody else? This just means that the server itself is featured. This doesn't imply that the service, the server service is alive. The, the, the gentleman is absolutely right. Uh, I mean, a nice pull request is just, hey, the server is alive. Service, obviously. Yep, so what shall, shall I do? And I just wanted to mend something. So obviously in this lab, especially if you see some of the errors, some people might know right away where it is or what's not working. And we might kind of ignore you and kind of get there um, because we want to show you the method methodology and exactly what steps you would take in case maybe it's something you haven't seen or an error you don't know what normally causes it. So we're going to kind of go through all the steps that you would go even if, oh, hey, I know that error, I know what's wrong. So we might kind of, if somebody raises their hand, we might pick somebody else because we want to go through all the steps in case it's something you haven't seen and just to get you used to all the possible troubleshooting steps. Hmm. Hmm. That was, would be an indication to attend it to the port <laughs> for the web service, SDK port. So this doesn't look good. So let's um, perhaps look <coughs> and connect to the vCenter server itself with um, RDP. Dog you, have, you, have, you, have, you have got mail. <laughs> Jane, his wife. Okay. Make sure mine is on. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, another problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thoughts? Uh, I, I think I'm going to, to, to call VMware and open a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, please, loud. Does the service have log on for Yeah, um, 
How can I check that? I don't know. I'm I'm too near. Yep. I mean that's standard installation stuff, local system. It's a good question. Is the database running? Let's check that. You're the first one actually saying that. That's good. Started. So SQL started. So if something's not starting, what might you check to figure out why it's not starting? Event okay. Event logs. When event logs are always a good idea. Always a good place right, to right. start. There's a request to check the VPXD log over here. Yep. Yeah, which is my command, sir. English keyboards, they're hard for us Germans, you know, sometimes. <laughs> okay, let's see that. Let's take a look into the Windows log files. Oop. Error. But we cannot see anything. Blah, 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 cannot be found, this event raises. I mean, this is not very conclusive of the region Yeah, here. pretty generic Windows error, not very really helpful. No, the next one also. Perhaps, uh, perhaps the system log, because we tried to start a service. But also, uh, this is not very conclusive. But then we heard, uh, check the VPXD log file. Very good. Uh, where can I find it? Here? Yes, of course, documented settings. No. Okay. <laughs> Say it again? Um, today, yeah, today, right, yeah. After the WWE World Party. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look into the log files, you're right. I think everything's foreign to him today. Okay. So, for all our products, there are various log levels, and obviously there's not only just the VPXD log files, there is also the VPXD con file. You can also increase log levels like uh, normal info, verbose logging, trivia logging, depending on how much output you want, you want to have in these log files. So basically, you could uh, increase that, try to restart it, and to narrow the search. Do we see, and it's uh, perhaps also something very difficult, do you see here, suspicious event? I think that's, that, that, that's, that's the, the most important thing of the art, to distinguish between non-relevant, uh, non-critical events, and perhaps the sus suspicious one. And uh, sometimes, and that's why we have the support guys, the heroes of support, you have to have this information, what is critical, what to look after for certain related problems. And this is information you might find in the community, like let's say for storage, uh, some SCSI sends error codes or something like when you have uh, uh, trespassing, the leader searching, uh, searching for certain strings, like Seinfeld overpasses, stuff like this. But sometimes there are strings you might not know, uh, and that's why the VMware people, they have the information, they have uh, the suspicious line, we have parsers. Also when you upload or drag from vCenter, um, support bundles, they're, they're able to pause it and um, display this stuff general, um, graphically and also hint them already to suspicious uh, lines. Okay, do we see here anything, ladies and gentlemen? Yep. It says here, um, SQL server login failed for user. Pop, pop. The user is not associated with the trust SQL server connection. Okay. Uh, okay. Next step. You go ahead. I heard from the gentleman right in the front of the left, system design, quite right. Brilliant. And okay, of course, let's check the design file. And I just want to mention something helpful about log files that 
probably don't look at log files unless we're looking for an error, but it's beneficial if you have time to get familiar with the logs and kind of learn what's normal in your logs. So if you ever have time, it's beneficial to look at the logs when things are running correctly to see what's normally logged. And I think a lot of us don't do that, and I think if we did, then it's easier to find, obviously. When you're looking for something wrong, you haven't seen it before and you know, hey, this isn't normal. Yeah, and I, I'd agree with that. So um, I think most of us in this room have uh, called tech support at some time or another. And one of the first things they're going to request from you is some sort of log file. Mm. And what you can find in these kind of log files are that even if you don't recognize what the error message is, uh, we've got a good friend named Google. Mm. And most of these things have been listed on the community forum. So you can get a head start on tech support, right? Mm. Exactly. That too. <laughs> One thing you can also do is we sent the services to start it in, uh, uh, not as a service, but in single mode. Drag it in, the VPXDXE, and start it in single mode. It also gives you, when the service no, it doesn't start, good indications, or, or gives you also perhaps some lines. You, you are then able to search again, better the community, the knowledge base, whatever. So the ODBC so error that we, uh, that we have been seeing in the log file, you can see it in real time when you try to start the service, and you get it right at, as, an, as a prompt. Yeah? In this, with this VPXD command when you, when you run it. Okay, uh, let's alter or change now this, um, or check the system DSN file as suggested. Okay. Everything look okay? Yeah? Yep. Wrong server name, I think it's localhost, but we can uh, yep. change that. It's, it's locally running, I think localhost is fine. As long as the host file is correct, I mean. But, but then it's resolving to vCenter form. Good suggestion, but perhaps not the issue. Um, uh, perhaps somebody mistyped or, or changed the, the or can also happen quite easily. A quite simple example in our lab, uh, um, not, a, not using a service account, <laughs> using an administrator account, changing the password again. So good practice to use service accounts. Or maybe also could be yeah, what, what have been the last changes in the environment. Usually perhaps we're talking about different teams which that makes also life not easier. Yep. And then, um, yeah, let's, let's see if somebody spelled the password. Yep. <coughs> or perhaps the user does not have the, the right rights or the sufficient rights to write into the database. Ah, I will try it with an integrated Windows authentication. Let's try that. Okay, that looks better. Okay, and let's then start the service. Bless you. There's no mute on the mic. <laughs> okay, so since the service started, Stefan, let's go back to uh, vCenter and go ahead and take a look at our environment. Yeah, which is my command. Okay. Let's try and open up again the vCenter client after that. We feeling lucky? <laughs> yeah? Okay. How about you, Ed? Do you feel lucky? Uh, I just wanted to ask you in this private atmosphere here. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, takes a little while, virtual and virtual. So, that's, actually, this is a good talking point. So, you know, uh, Melody kind of mentioned that for many of you, you, you already knew what this issue was, right? You could have went straight to the ODBC uh, connection if, if that, in fact, is what the problem is, right? <laughs> And uh, the point of this lab was not so much to give you a number of different tips and tricks, but more so to 
to, to adjust or structure the way that you think about addressing problems. In many cases, there are a lot of administrators that know every command in the book. They don't have to look at any reference material, but they're inefficient in how they solve a, solve a problem. So if you think about this issue, we went from connectivity to the server, just the server itself. And then this gentleman mentioned, okay, well, we know that there's connectivity to this server. What about the service itself? All right. Then we said, okay, well, we can't figure that out. It's not working properly. So let's look at VPXD and get more information. And we took a path of looking at log files to find more granular information until we found specifically what we were looking for. So if this was replace ODBC with variable X, this is a great strategic path to resolving an issue. And when you put these steps together and you think about the time that you'll wait on hold with tech support, these are the things that can help you along your day in a couple of different manners. One method would be, uh, one school of thought would be the time that's spent from your team or you personally sitting on hold when you could be doing something else. But then you also think about the impact to your business, right? The time that this server would be down or connectivity to virtual center might be down. I would agree with that. There may be some things. Uh, there may be some things in the future that would fall in line with that. I think that's the safest way I could say that. Okay, there we go. So yeah, just this lab that we're using is actually the, um, using the same cloud as all of the labs downstairs. So I don't know if you noticed, there's a very long line for the labs downstairs this morning. So um, since they're being hit pretty hard, I think there is a little slowness, um, unfortunately, in the environment. So everybody kind of woke up, I think, at 10 this morning. <laughs> so in the meanwhile, while we're waiting, so um, perhaps some <clears throat> a short introduction to the, um, the Vima. The, the Vima itself, um, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, no. Uh, I started. I will finish it. The Vima itself is, um, as I already said, helps you to automate commands. To um, uh, helps you also to, to control power state of states of your ESX server. Also serves. It's quite quite odd and uh, normal. The ESX servers don't have any co any console, so usually the remote command line when you install it somewhere else is um, it's quite tedious to set of commands. Yeah, like uh, when you say you do an ESX CFG, then minus M pass, list all the passes or the NIX, you always have to add this host username and password section, which is getting after a while when you're debugging quite tedious. Yeah, also with each command you have to enter host username and password. Um, so here the um, um, Vima is able to help you very good. So if you then we have a fast pass, you are able to store the credentials of the servers you are talking to, so you don't have to always re-authenticate. And then you're able to change or log into the um, <clears throat> uh, into one of these um, ESX servers, for instance, and are able to issue commands uh, without, um, yeah, using the host username and uh, password section. So it would be VFP target, and then a minus s like server, and then I'm taking, for instance, v ESX i dash sigma. And um, then, then you see in brackets the server in which context you are working in. And you don't need then to use uh, any more this host username and password stuff. Just by a show of hands, how many of you uh, have ESXi in your environment today? Wow. Okay. How many of you that didn't raise your hands have plans to uh, migrate 2000? Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> What's that? Or are they getting any choice? Yeah, you, the true, true, true. Um, <laughs> question, for those of you that have already made that transition, um, have you run into any issues troubleshooting those ESXi hosts? And if so, what are you using to do, to, to do so today? Okay, so that's actually been consistent with the response that I've gotten most of this week. So that's really why we're talking about Vima and why we introduced it to this lab. Because what we found in the field is that the actual performance of the VMs and how they run, that really doesn't change, right? It's the hypervisor is still the same. But for the administrators, the people that manage these ESXi hosts, a lot of the commands that they're used to using or you're used to using have changed. Very similar, but changed a little bit. And you'll notice that with some of the commands that you've got here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, no. my insurance, not the case. It depends on what, what time of day you call into. The poor people knew it well. The Indian people knew it well. The American uh, the, uh, call center wasn't a screening office for some reason. Huh. Okay. Some of the American guys I had didn't know it as well. Was it like a one off or I mean like two or three times. Two or three times. I was on call with one of them to solve an HA issue. I waited on phone so long I ended up fixing the problem myself. And one of the issues, I went up on like six I was on call six hours. And then I went to different call centers and certain guys did it and I was on the other side. Wow. Okay. Well, first thing, uh, proud of you for fixing it yourself. That's a good thing. Um, second thing, though, uh, I can't speak to uh, that experience. I, I mean, I, I don't work in tech support, but I, I, I have to agree with the sentiments that you're saying. I do know that there's a, an initiative, and that's from the top down, from Paul Merritt's, about where we're going with DSXI. And I know that if these... Um, if your experience, if all of the experiences uh, in this room are reflected by these two gentlemen, I can guarantee you that moving forward, that will, that will definitely not be the case. Um, one question in the room: who, who, who of you guys worked for, for a support organization? There's a ticketing system, closing tickets, searching for. They have got what I can tell you. Ed, usually, the support organizations tend sure? to have a high personal HR fluctuation. And of course, we're getting broader, but I know this from, uh, from Cork, Ireland. I have to, been there several times. And um, a lot of, lot of the, the people, they get good knowledge, VMware knowledge, they, they get a lot of cases. And then, of course, they're, they're going to other consulting companies or, or, or leaving support because it's a, a very tedious and um, a very, very demanding task. Yeah? It's like, a, I don't know, a Sisyphus work. You've got a queue line, never, it never collapses. You can, you can do your job very good. Of course, they're getting promoted, getting, getting rewarded, whatever. But it's a, a very tough job. And uh, usually, the, the personal rotation, the support organizations is high. And then, of course, you have to bring these people again up to speed when you get new ones. And the, the products we have are not getting less, you know. Um, so that's basically also one of the reasons. Yeah, I do know that, um, you know, because there has been some issues in the past with, obviously, the support and like lack of coverage of certain products. And so they, I know they are taking the feedback very seriously of like people having issues with tech support or maybe there's not enough text for this product or that. And it's hard because there are so many products, they can't all be trained on everything. And I know they're working to try to get the balance so they have enough people to cover products. And obviously as it's changing and more people are going to ESXi, they need more people that know ESXi. Some of the other products like they know they need more people on SRM. And I know there are initiatives and they are taking everybody's feedback and that you know they're trying to improve the issue. So, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to say one last thing about the uh, tech support thing, and then we, we'll go back to the troubleshooting. I think that um, the, the opinions of Eddie Blackwell don't always represent those of VMware, but um, I, in my accounts, a couple of things happen. I think if you, for whatever company you work for, you deal with as a as a, as a customer, there are going to be some uh, slips in the crack with, when it comes to technical support. Uh, in my accounts, there is a, a process of which we, 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 we follow. And the first thing is that the customer files an SR. The next thing is if that customer does not get the service that they want, I escalate it. I escalate it internally with our tech support team. I also escalate it with my, with my management. If any of you have experiences like this gentleman experienced or like you referenced over here, the best thing for you to do is to escalate that and get visibility on it. The worst thing to do is let it sleep under the rug, right? Because we need to address these things. So that's that. Um, there are some individuals. For those of you that have outstanding experiences, talk to me afterwards, and I can introduce you to a couple people so that we can invent some of these, uh, some of these comments. I want them all. Mm -hmm. All right. Going back to this guy, right? We got in a virtual center. It's up and running. There's a red uh, flag here. It's on an ESXi host. Where do we go? Alarms? Okay. Mm. Okay. Back okay. to the English mouse, you can't read the whole 
They are. So basically, it can't talk to the host. Um, management agents, but of course, um, first, you'd probably always track, make sure the host is actually up um, and that we can get to it. So can we see if we can actually get to that host? Yeah, DNS. it would be a process. Check DNS, make sure it resolves. It just says it can't synchronize. Okay. Okay. So basically, the host is uh, is up and running from the narrowing search. And DNS is uh, working. It's not able to synchronize. So we we are here. Uh, that's also a fact on a different host than. Uh, we have Bjarne here on B Center. This machine is here called uh, Moving In Control Center. Also, a part like the admin machine that jump in host into these fences into our, our, our lab cloud. So, basically, this guy is able to talk to him, but B Center is uh, perhaps not able to talk to him. Um, what we could, we could also do now is um, try to, to party into it, or what we could also, also see and try is to use the VMA to really. Um, change into the context of the server and see if we're, we are able to, to to pull information from the ZSX server. Yep. So, so if we're able to pull information from the ZSX server, we know that host daemon is running, right? So um, let's change it. Oh, I forgot to minus this. Okay. List VM kernel network cards, and we are able to receive the information here. Okay, so now we know we are able to receive information. Host seems to be up and running. Um, control center is able to talk to his host in the narrowing search, whereas vCenter is having a communication problem with this host. So, if the problem is not on the host, it's not virtual center. Where does the problem lie? Somewhere on the network in between the two hosts. Any ideas? Maybe what? Firewall. Is that a firewall, Stephen? Did you set up a firewall? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Copy. Let's go back to the vCenter host. In our scenario, um, there was a frustrated uh, co uh, consultant that left the company. And um, yeah, it's, it was really hard um, in this lab to, to show connectivity problems with a single host. Usually in the four-day class, so when you're in, the, um, in real life, and we all know this, network layouts and, um, are more complex. You have different uh, subnetting, different VLANs. You have perhaps really um, intermediate firewall levels, security levels. For, uh, for instance, we have this nice shiny gu uh, guide to uh, harden ESX servers. And obviously, management networks should be isolated. So how do you properly design, for instance, management networks? And so firewall issues can be really um, an issue. But what we see also is like more often in the wild, um, like um, VLAN tagging or NIC teaming policy issues. Um, the wrong, wrong one is chosen here. Um, we, couldn't, we couldn't do this in our lab. So that's why we built in this um, stupid error. Because uh, normally when you rack something like a VLAN ID or disconnect a network card, you need an ILO board or a mob management board yeah, to, to get to the server and correct the issue. And um, this would have, would, would have meant in, in our uh, vPod cloud, that would have, would have given you administrative access inside the lab manager interface to really uh, get to the console of this host. We couldn't do that. That's why we, we have chosen this um, very, very... Simple error. Okay, let's disable these rules and see whether it mitigates the issue. Hmm. There's some synchronization happening and it's back again. 
Okay, uh, Mehdi, uh, what's next? Uh, looks like there's a VM that's inaccessible. Damn it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you were hoping it was going to be a short day today, huh? I mean, yeah. What, we, what shall I do? Can we try powering it on and <laughs> see what happens? Say it again? Is that reasonable? Can we try powering on that VM? Marketing went to the VM. They need it for the new marketing uh, strategies. Mm. Huh. Risk and storage? Okay. No. <laughs> uh, I, I hit the wrong. Um, I'm sorry, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, thick German fingers. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, where is this machine uh, registered? On Sigma. So, okay. Let's go to Sigma. Configuration. Storage adapters. And then perhaps take the iSCSI adapter. We have an iSCSI target here. The IQN. And uh, yeah, let's rescan it. Okay, it's still inaccessible here. Nothing changed. Any further suggestions? Go look at the storage. Browser storage. Good idea. Perhaps I'm creating now my second new data center. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, not responding. Ah. There we go. So what are we looking for? So what we see here, we don't see any VM1. That's odd. Um, but there is VM2 is registered. Nothing else apart from some ISOs. So it should be this VM, but I, I don't know for sure if it is, this is this VM. If this how is would VM we know? How, how can we check to make sure that this is actually the VM that's called VM1? VMX file. Yep. VMX files, if you don't look at them, um, it's another thing that, you know, if you look at them sometimes, even on things that are working and get familiar what they look like on your working VMs, it's beneficial, so if you do run into issues, you know what a normal file looks like, and you can go in and know what you're look, actually looking for. So it's good to get familiar with this information. It's something I think a lot of us probably haven't done until you actually run into it and have a need to go look at it, but it's something, if you look at it and you're familiar with it, it helps it when, um, when you're trying to find an issue. Okay, this, this is the VM. This so name, VM1. So display name, and sure enough, we have VM1. So any suggestions what to do if that's our VM? Re-register it. Re-register is a good idea. Well, no, it's not bad. It's like a reboot. It's when Windows re-registering, not a bad as we said though. Yeah, re registering VMs does sometimes work if you've had like a storage glitch or something, um, or something went down and comes back up. Even though it's there in the same place, sometimes I know that uh, removing and adding does work to get them back. Is it deleting? I'm clicking. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? That it's off? Orphaned. Yeah, that, that sometimes, orphaned. yeah, usually if it's orphaned, it says orphaned versus inaccessible, and then that does work. Um, those are the cases when, you know, at, removing and adding it does work. Hmm. Insufficient resources. <sighs> Anyone? Reservations, resource pool. Okay. So resource pool um, design and also sizing is um, here. This is a quite simple example. Easy, of course, when you have some 
little bit of experience, you know that. Um, but it's the, the most often and hard to do thing in, in uh, huge environments. So I mean, we have a fellow colleague, Duncan Epping, yeah, running Yellow Bricks. He, ro he wrote a, a complete book about HA and DRS. So most people tend to do for some departments limits to resource pool design to really divide uh, uh, some of their cluster for different purposes, but uh, then putting indefinite VM into a, a certain set of resources, running into resource constraints, stuff like this, so a quite easy example. Okay. Good, let's try it again. Oh, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm reading. Perhaps it's a little too small. Again, an error. Yeah, so it's Reason, a... at, and, <laughs> exclamation mark, star. Sounds like something at. you're saying this morning. Um, no, 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 no. The system cannot find the file specified. Cannot open the disk. V win 2K3, Basie. Five times zero, one VMDK, or one of the snapshot disks, it depends on VMware is kind of find the virtual disk, v, win 2K3, Bayesi, five times zero, one dot VMDK. Please verify the pass is valid and try again. I mean, that's a, a pretty sound error message. Yeah, I mean, pretty saying clear. you can't find your disk file, so what would we go do? Yeah. Okay. Bezi. There is no Bezi here. <laughs> okay, that was too easy for you. I know. Snapshot chaining. Snapshot chaining. Par parrot. Yeah, yeah, I know. Parent and child is chaining. But I was, uh, I, I was too late on the, on the deadline for submitting my lab. Our lab. Sorry, mate. <laughs> uh, otherwise, these are also very common and... Um, Hard to fix issues, chaining of, uh, yep. Yeah, especially when people, uh, you know, do a snapshot, they forget, and you kind of have them run indefinitely, and you, like, run out of your uh, disk space because your, your uh, change file's bigger than your VM. Yep. And that's something that takes a little bit longer to troubleshoot, and that's, do they cover that in the class? Mm -hmm. In the troubleshooting class, do they cover troubleshooting snapshot issues in the troubleshooting class, I would assume? Yeah, definitely. So that would be something in the troubleshooting class, the four-day class, because that's a little bit more in-depth and would probably take the whole hour if we uh, went down that path. So very well done, or huh? Spooling up, fine. That's good. That's our favorite, Windows. Yay. Yeah, looks good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's just Windows, so um, just um, reboot it, you know. It's Windows. Yeah, it's, no, Windows. I love, I love Windows, it's good. Although I use my notebook or Ubuntu and the workstation then to run my Windows, but I still run Windows. Everybody does. Windows has gotten stable, 2003 XP. It's not too bad, everybody's using it. Everybody's complaining still. Hopefully you don't do this with VMware. Everybody's using it and everybody's complaining. <laughs> Hopefully you're satisfied. Huh. Okay, so, so reboot didn't work. So what, 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 what should I do now? <laughs> First of all, power, power, power off this VM, huh? <laughs> okay, let's power this off. Um, <clears throat> Okay, um, check the... Snapshot, do we have snapshots? SCSI adapter, someone said over here. Does it look? No, we don't have snapshots. When we take a look at the file structure here, there are only two, one uh, pointer VMDK and one flat. I mean, that's one disk. What about checking the logs and see if uh, the logs say anything? Logs are always a good idea. So what is, he, what is he doing here? Looks like he's reading out his VMX file, reading its configuration before it's booting up. We saw the error far later when it already ha was, showed up the 2003 logo. So let's try if we can find a suspicious line here.
Um, yeah, so somebody had already mentioned um, your SCSI adapter, so sure enough, that's the issue, and that's something that's also found in the log in case you didn't know, hey, that's a SCSI issue. It's Apparently he's else. using also message hint, message bus logic, need driver, send, whatever. And uh, uh, a little bit further down, he's also destroying the, the bus logic device when he's booting up. It says in the log file. Uh, let's see if we can find it again. Of course. Am I blind? Where is it? <laughs> it's closer. There we go, ah, okay. at the bottom. Adapter reset, bus reset. Yeah, this is then after that when he's looping. It's always resetting. Yeah, so it's infinite looping because it's not working. So. And uh, rebooting, blue screen rebooting. Okay. Uh, let's go and change it. Um, yeah, so in the documentation for creating VMs, um, and vSphere has information on the different types of SCSI adapters, and so usually you would build templates um, to use for deploying your VMs, and there's information on how to build your base VMs um, for different types. Yep. Oh, so to look at it and see what drivers loaded? You mean something like a historical initial configuration file to, to get a configuration drift? Yeah, because there are multiple choices to choose, but this is a way to use the generation. So you maybe look out at the right choice because you know the adapter. I mean, there is a product uh, that we launched, Configuration Manager, where Config Control went in. And it's basically the, what, what we had, uh, especially when you think about really solid change management processes when or, or who did change something and uh, was it, was, did he have the right to. And this also, like you say, ha helps a lot to determine root causes because uh, mostly after changes, perhaps errors occur or might occur because if you don't change anything, there are no human errors, stuff like this, you know. And it's, it's in config control. You can do this uh, different, um, no, configuration manager, sorry. And you can do this differential stuff. But not uh, historically, I mean, there's a log rotation also for the VMware log files. The only thing you could do if you, when you have, like you define from your processes, uh, when, when, uh, when a virtual machine is being rolled out, uh, and from, from the layout, you have a process to save your documentation or the first log file, whatever. Depends on the processes you have. Okay, we've got another vMotion error here, I guess. We do indeed, we do indeed. So uh, a couple things. As we go through this last step, I just want to give, I know, I know many of you have to jump to another session and you've got to wait in line so you want to get a head start. Uh, we've gone through, we'll go through the third step of this lab, but there are still two other exercises. There's one on masking a LUN, a hidden LUN, and then there's another one on storage vMotion. So uh, don't feel that you've done everything in this lab. Uh, you've done a lot of it, but if you still want to get your hands dirty downstairs, you can do that, right? So this next question, uh, the next part of this lab, we'll look at vMotion. Many of you have had vMotion failures. It's usually attributed to one thing. Uh, we wanted to do something different in the lab. So in this use case, you have times when vMotion fails, times when it's successful. Um, there are times when it's faster or slower than others. So there's not a complete break in, in the vMotion chain. And I'll give you a clue just for the sake of time. This is not something outside of the virtual center realm. This is not something out of, outside of a configuration from what was done in Virtual Center, right? So you don't have to look at the physical aspects of your environment per se. So that being said, where's the first place we might want to go to look? What's that? Logs, yeah, network. VLAN trunking, switch configuration, mm -hmm. stuff like this usually in the wild. Okay, so from, uh, from our side, um, I think we are we're pretty much through.
Yeah. That's our advertising for the lab. Don't forget to rate the session. Very important. Um, thank you for taking the time to visit the session. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions about this, um, troubleshooting or anything else, and those of you that had support issues, come talk to us. They might kick us out, but we'll be in the hallway outside. Okay, thank you. <laughs>